lies for living. It's not a rehearsal. Why are you? What, what, what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. You know, what's stopping you? And when you step inside of an EC, you fire it up and you cock it into gear and off you go, you go, I really don't know that I need to come back. <laughs> you know? It's not that you drive down the road and, oh, it's a stinking thing to drive. You know, it won't stop, it won't go around the corner. I, mm -hmm. I'm too scared to take it down that dirt track. It doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care. <laughs> it doesn't care. It doesn't care. It wants to take you where you want to be. And that's what we design. Well, what's up, everyone? We're here at Earth Cruiser with uh, Lance, and he's good. Kind of yeah, yeah. Take us around the shop. Talk about why you guys built these awesome vehicles, how you build them, and just give us a little rundown on Earth Cruiser as a whole. So we can do that. Awesome. So right. yeah, tell us about the how did this all get started. Uh, it's simple. I think I think is I think is how a lot of things get started. Um, alcohol was involved. <laughs> It was, um, it was, Earth Cruiser really started a very, very long time ago. Um, Michelle and I were traveling somewhere interesting and we, we always have loved to travel by vehicle. It just gives you so much freedom, as you well know, is what you were doing nowadays. And so it gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of options, all the rest of it. Um, and we wanted to keep you able to do that. We still want to go see amazing, fabulous places. We want, to do all, we want to do all that sort of stuff. And there really wasn't anything we could just go out and buy. And so we actually had to build something. We've had plenty of land cruisers and Nissan patrols. We had all that sort of stuff. There's nothing special for that. And so with a lot of collective experience, that's where Earth Cruiser come from. So this is, so we have, we have essentially three models of Earth Cruiser. So we have the EXD. This one's getting built up on a, on a Chevy. Come have a quick look. I don't know if there's a light on or not, but I don't know, I don't know if the camera's going to pick up very much. Yeah, it does pretty good in the right. lower oh, lights. Yeah, Sorry, I can see everything here. Yeah, yeah. So again, these aren't built anything like your typical RV. Now we talk about those 1600 individual parts, all these brackets, all these stuff, that's all us, right? These particular ones are all made here. You know, a lot of this stuff will never ever be seen again. We don't care, right? It's going to be neat, it's going to be clean, you're not going to see any staples, you're never ever going to see any wood glue, because we don't use any of that crap. Right? This particular EXD has some bamboo seat covers, because I kind of like bamboo, but you'll never see any plywood, it just doesn't exist. You just don't do it. You know? This wiring stuff, you'll never see it again, ever. Never be seen. Who cares? It's still going to be perfect. And this truck. I was uh, in here with Brent earlier and I was like, man, I could totally live in this. This is a lot more space than I have in my pop-up. Um, yeah, it's on the it's back just, of a one-ton truck. Yeah, and you got the cassette toilet here. Will this be a shower? Yeah, or yeah. Or yeah, very cool. And I like, yeah, I like having the shower on the way in because it's like a mudroom. You can have a rainy day. You can put your boots off there. Yeah. Again, it's all, all very well thought out. The whole idea of all of this thing is so you get to use it. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. we travel with our dogs, you know, they, there is more chance that I'll spend a night outside than the dogs will. So the dogs come in, they can get washed off. I'm serious. I mean, this is just normal life stuff, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Heat event in there so they can get all warmed up, drive mm -hmm. off, and then everybody's happy. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I like the everybody happy part. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the Fuso, as you know, most people know, it starts life as a very basic commercial truck, uh, which is great, we like that, but it doesn't really make it as it is, as comfortable for any sort of long distance traveling. So, you know, there's a lot of work we put into the suspension and you know, wheels we talked about, the seats, the soundproofing, the electrical systems, just to make it nice, you know, it matters, you know. To me, that great big windscreen is the best big screen TV on the planet. Yeah, Brent was telling me on one of the trips that he was, you guys were actually outrunning them in these rigs versus oh, yeah. the Tacoma. There's no way a Toyota can keep up one of these. Not a chance. Sorry, just, no, not I a chance. That's, I think yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a chance. Yeah. Not a chance. 
So there's the box on the ground. So you work on them on the ground for a while, obviously, yeah. until they're ready to go. Exactly, yeah. Cool. And the nature's head compost toilet in, in there, one. it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're getting really quite popular. Our, this is our new EXP, this one is getting made here. Um, we're going to put a composting one in. I personally never used any, I know nothing about it. Michelle thinks it's a good idea, so I guess we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, DC air conditioning, we never have generators, we have no need for them. Um, they're always solar, diesel powered. And okay. you know. we, we decided on the Fuso truck for three key reasons. One, it's the most international chassis, right? But so was a couple of others, but it was the most. Um, it had 16 inch wheels, not 17s, which what um, Isuzu did. And last, but the most important, was that it was a 12 volt system. All right, so they're the three key reasons that we went on to Fuso. We can talk about the rest of it some other time. What we absolutely had to have was a vehicle that would say a very similar wheel track, not wheel base, but wheel track to say a Land Cruiser or a Nissan Patrol. That was crucial. Again, we spent a lot of time going up the beach, all the rest of it, you drive through sand for days and days and days, climb big sand dunes. You don't want to be out of the wheel track of the preceding vehicles. No fun, particularly when you're coming back coming back down a really steep sand dune and you've got different wheel tracks, it can be just unpleasant. <laughs> All right, so we're in the thick of it here. Tell us about, yeah, how these are uh, Well, I, I guess we'll explain just a, a little bit about that sausage, right? So we spend a lot, as we probably gathered, we spend a lot of time engineering, we spend a lot of time in our R&D, and of course, we actually use the trucks ourselves. And the, um, the basic, the, the way we go about doing things, we essentially assemble our own product. So there's roughly 1,600 individual parts that go into making an earth cruiser. That's our parts, right? Now, we're not talking about an awning or a, a light switch. No, no, we're talking about parts that we've made ourselves. Now, as example, um, it gets down to the detail of the towel rack. Right, the towel bar, right? That you put your towel, right? We didn't like the ones that were out there because most of them were plated chrome, they're pretty crappy. We wanted stainless steel ones and we wanted them to be nice, we wanted them to be perfect. So we make our own. And the way we do that in this building here, we do all of our, all of our own R&D here. We make the first one here. We've got the metal fabricators, we've got the machinists. They're all here, they can do it. And when we think we've got it right, and then it'll go out to quote or to bid with other local Bend in Oregon manufacturers, They'll make our parts for us and then we'll come back and assemble them. And that's how we do it. Right, so it's a, not a unique business way of doing things, but it's very much lean manufacturing where we focus on what we're really, really good at. And we don't spend the time going to buying that million dollar milling machine that we don't need. We rather spend our resources training our people, whether it be through high school, university, and then onto the workshop floor. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. That is how we do it. We work very closely with the high schools. So we have many high school students come through and spend a day with us, which is great. We enjoy that very much. Uh, and we work very closely with local universities for intern programs. And kind of how all that gets wrapped in is imagine us, you know, we're a very small company, we're very little, but we want to build absolute world-class quality products. And the way we do that is that we work, as I said, close with high schools, so we're training our own people. We work, and, and it gives the kids a chance to know if this is what they want to do with their life. I mean, go to uni, you know, be a metal fabricator, be a vehicle builder, if that's what you want to do. We want to give people some choice, and it's good. And it's great for the fellas and the ladies who work here to be able to show other people what they do, which is always nice, right? And it's good. Uh, and, and so then, um, with the university, again, because we have a great internship program with them, and they're they, their focus is energy systems engineering, which works perfectly for us. So that is you know, how the solar systems really work. And I you know, don't say, oh, I've got 2,500 watts here, yeah, great. Well, what does that actually mean at 20% sun? You know? We can tell you, right? Uh, you know, the, the detail of how the wire is made, the wire is made for our wiring looms, we can tell you, because we spec that, right? Because we have the brains here to make sure everything is working in sync with each other. You know, our, a lot of our customers uh, are engineering sort of people because they, can, they understand and they enjoy learning the intricacies of how all of the systems talk to each other nicely. You can tell it's a really fun place to be. It's, it's nice, an atmosphere of people who want to be here 
because they love what they do. They given the given the, um, the the training. They're giving the and and they train us as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> is that they're given the opportunity to be really good at what they're really good at. You know what I mean? You know, it's yeah. I just want to make something really good. Well, at Earth Cruiser, you've come to the right place. Yeah to do that you know and, and it's fun it's great it's 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 exciting i love to be here i just love i just love watching these guys do what they do because yeah. they do it really really well they, it looks like everybody knows exactly where they're going next and has a, a task that they're you know excited to complete and it's, a, it's a good it, it is good so it's not it's not assembly line it is we um and i won't go into minutiae about how we put them together too much but it's not assembly line you know we essentially build two at a time because that just works with our production flow and it, it, it's great so no one's stuck doing the same job over and over and over again there's different levels of uh, qualifications inside building an EC so there's a hierarchy behind that so again the, yeah, yeah, one guy is not necessarily doing wiring today and being a plumber tomorrow only if he's done certain disciplines so he can do that you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You work, you work your way up. Yeah, you work your way through it. cool that you don't keep one person on installing windows or all the, they can kind of do different things and It's really important. Get their hands You've got to keep it interesting, you know? Yeah, it is. Exactly. And it is. And so, you know, as, as the system progresses, we talk about customer service. Well, you can imagine who's taking care of our customers now, right? Because we can, you know, the, 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 the um, workshop foremans, you know, they're typically who will do any rework if there is to be done when people come back from their shakedown. We'll talk about that a little bit. Because again, they're responsible for their crew, right? So how it worked, uh, the, the, the customers and kept well informed as their trucks are being built, which is great. We love them to come visit and watch their, their, their free machine getting put together. I think it's important. And as the, um, as the day comes close to pickup time, very exciting day for everybody. I mean, we, we put our heart and soul into it. So we're as excited as them most of the time is that we um day pickup day comes we will typically ask our customers to be here for anywhere from one to five days people go goodness me that's a long time well it's normally one full day of just orientation or just going around seeing how everything works uh, as i said you know the owner's manuals and the um, earth cruiser community has been involved with our customer prior to pickup for you know many months so they've already kind of started to you know get some connections there so then we go to the orientation thing, that's great. And then we do the shakedown. Shakedown is that we will give our customers, depending on their level of um, you know, comfort zone, if you like, various places to go camp around Bend, which is great. You don't have to go far to, as you well know, yeah. have some really terrific places. So they'll go do that. We ask them to spend two nights. And part of the deal is you must use absolutely everything. You must use absolutely everything and then the conversation is reversed. We then ask our customer to show us how to use an earth cruiser. There's, there's, there's options there for driver training, there's options there for do all different things for our, for our people. And then, then it's really important, after the shakedown, everything's been done to the customer's perfection, you'll notice that the truck doesn't have a, this one's getting close to being finished, doesn't have an earth cruiser label on the front. The reason it doesn't, and this is what, and again, it's, it's company deep, it's not just, you know, flowery words. It's essentially what we call the promise. And the promise is that somewhere along the line, you may, uh, may have talked to an Earth Cruiser owner, talked to some of our salespeople, come visit the factory, said, okay, you know, I am going to trust you with a, a, a sum of money, but more importantly, I'm going to entrust that you guys know how to build a product that I can use for some portion of my life. I can get more money, can't get more time. All the money in the world won't buy another summer, right? Right. So, Earth Cruiser, what you've been telling me is that you're going to build me this truck, you're going to deliver it in a time frame, you're going to, it's going to be at, a, at an agreed price, and I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to be able to use it. That's our promise. Agreed. So, we've you know, we've talked about we're building them, we put them together, we've talked a little bit about the systems, we've talked a little bit how we've got to this point. So now our customer has come back from their shakedown trip after ideally two days, we prefer more, but two days is minimum, two nights, most two nights. Come back and then we'll ask our customer a very simple question. Did we keep our promise to you? 
And th only then does the sticker go on the front. Because until that point, we don't deserve to put our name on the front of that truck. Wow. You know what I mean? And it matters. And everybody who worked on their truck is, is signed, and you'll see what everybody did. We are responsible. You know, if, if you say to me, look, Lance, build me my earth cruiser. Well, I can't do it on my own, but I know I've got a, the, a phenomenal collective crew behind me that's going to make sure it happens, and they'll put their name to it. Um, what else do you want to know? I mean, it goes for hours. Yeah, yeah, we could go for hours. I think, I think this has been a great uh, tour of the, the ones in production. It would be cool to see a, a finished one. Yeah, I know you, I think you have one outside, right? We do. Yeah, so yeah, let's check that out. And the, the finished one is the, the pop top, I believe. Is that right? Or, oh, you do have the FX. Awesome. So it's all open up for you. Thank awesome. you, sir. Thanks, Brent. But for that, you're going to have to tune in next time. So be sure to hit that subscribe. Tap the bell so you get the notifications when I post new videos. The only question is, are you down to mob? Woo!